This is the cardamom. Is a nice smile, nice, very, very nice with coffee. This is the knaf, and I will see it's Palestinian. He do that. I am. I do that. Now, when you take the coffee, you can uh, taste it. It's very, very, very nice. You like it, man. My name is Omar Ben Ali. I'm from Palestinian. I left my country almost ten years ago. I left my family, left my kids, left everything. Because maybe everybody here know what the occupation Israeli he do in Palestinian people. This is my son, Yazan. Uh, this is uh, the small uh, daughter, it's uh, Tala. She is now uh, 13 years, when I'm lived uh, here, it's three years. This is my father, he's died in 2014. This is my mother, my love, my heart. She is. Uh, Die, she left me in September. I am not see her. I, I make refugee when I'm come in airport in 2008. After three years, uh, I sit down with uh, somebody in immigration. And in 20 minutes, he refused me. And he, he sent it me after letter. Uh, he have a uh, uh, around 38 reasons why he, he is, uh, refused me. 38, and he, he sit with me 20 minutes. I can't return because he know I have danger, very danger if I'm returned. He no accept to, to, to bring my family here. Now, if you ask me really what I want, I am okay, I'm live here, I'm half safe, but my family, it's not in safe. I need my family, I need my life, I need my, 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 my wife. We're at the uh, Lacol border crossing. This is the main border crossing between Quebec and the United States. This is uh, Highway 15 on the Canadian side, and on the other side of the border crossing is I-87 that will take you down to Plattsburgh and Albany and New York City. And this is the border crossing you want to avoid if you want to make a refugee claim because according to the Safe Third Country Agreement, uh, if you're coming from a safe third country, which the United States is defined to be, if you try to make your refugee claim here at the uh, Canadian border crossing, you will be turned back. And then if you try to make a regular crossing after that and they realize you try to make a regular one, you'll be forbidden from making a refugee claim. So there's an incentive, there's a logical, completely understandable reason why people will make irregular crossings. We're on the Quebec side of the Quebec-US border. And this is a place called Roxham Road. Roxham Road ends right there. And it continues right over that little hill on the US side. And it's a place that's internationally famous because people come here from the US in order to enter Canada regularly and make refugee claims. Last time I was here, there was an abandoned baby carriage on the other side. You know, here you have some kids clothing that, that was left. So uh, this is about as far as I can go because if I, if I went further, another step or two, uh, I'd be on the American side. And that's technically illegal and I'm not going to do that with the cops right there. People will come up this road, get off of whatever vehicle they're in or cab, and then come across. Stop. If you cross here, you will be arrested. You speak French, you speak English. Plattsburgh, New York is the main uh, gateway and you can get to Plattsburgh, it's a several hours ride from New York City. It also has an airport so people can fly in there. And in Plattsburgh you can take a cab here. There's nothing um, mystical or dangerous about it. There's uh, thousands of miles of border. So we're here at a place where the RCMP has 24 hour surveillance. But there aren't walls, there aren't drones, there, aren't, there are motion detectors but there's no way that this can be fully enforced. And if there are basic networks of mutual aid on either side, we can effectively render this border non-existent. We are in Dundee, Quebec. The border is actually a few kilometers from here. Since January, 
there have been a lot of people that, more than usual that have been crossing here and that a lot of people in the region here have seen, have helped and um, it just so happens that a community group which deals with a lot of the community groups in the area were having a spaghetti supper so we came down from Montreal to uh, give them information. Here we have people that are fleeing persecution people that are afraid for their lives, people that want to have a better life and want to participate in society and they're being told that sorry if you want to come here you can't come to our port of entry or to our airports. So for us it was uh, evident that not just uh, you know making information for the people in this region but also for the people crossing to give them a little bit of a step up to uh, what are the hurdles that they're going to have to face and we would like for them to know about it before they come. The attitude that our team takes regarding these people is uh, if someone is here for nefarious purposes or to commit crimes, we want to do everything we can to find out before we give them to the Canada Border Services Agency. So once they cross, as you said, once they cross. once they cross, you can actively help, you can organize in your community to help people. And I think it's also important to say there's absolutely no reason to think, absolutely no reason to think that people who have crossed irregularly or illegally, however you want to put it, are any more dangerous than anybody in this room. And so even little gestures like putting a poster up that says, welcome refugees, welcome immigrants, that, that makes a difference, you know, it just sets a tone.